Hello everybody, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm going to do a, uh, an interesting recipe today. It's not something I've made up. This is something that I got from a fellow YouTuber actually, and part of the reason I'm doing this is to uh, kind of tell you guys about his channel because I think it's pretty neat and possibly some of you guys and gals out there that watch these videos, I, I think you might like his channel as well. And the channel is uh, called 18th Century Cooking with James Townsend and Sons, and uh, it focuses on cooking from way back in the day, early uh, colonial times, and and just uh, cooking way back when and how, how it was done back then. He has a really cool channel. He cooks all of his food over an open fire or a, a wood-fired oven or whatever the case may be, and I... I really enjoy watching his stuff, and this is one of the recipes from that. So I'm more or less going to follow it, but in my common style, I'm going to modify and, and adapt it as I so desire. So what I'm going to be making today is a, what he calls an onion pie. And there's definitely more in it than onions. You can see here there's potatoes, onions, some eggs. I'm going to hard boil a couple of these eggs, which I might add are fresh for my chickens. You see there's a couple green ones from my Americana. And that's about it for his recipe, but I'm also going to saute some uh, Italian sausage as well, just for a little extra flavor. So let's get going. First I'm going to put a couple eggs in some water that I have boiling on the stove. Uh, I don't know, four eggs or so, five, something like that, maybe four eggs. I think that'll be just right. We're going to hard boil them and then slice them up later. And then while that's boiling, I'll slice up the potato and the onion into thin slices. Okay, we're ready to assemble everything. Got the eggs hard boiled and sliced up. The uh, sausage is also sauteed and ready to go. Uh, what's interesting about this dish and some of the others that uh, James Townsend and Sons does on, on his, on his uh, YouTube channel, it's interesting to see how with some of these old recipes, uh, necessity was the mother of invention, I think might be the right term, or just it was, it was just sort of a use what you got mentality. I could easily see all these things being available on a typical or early 1800s American homestead or farm. Uh, eggs from your chickens, some root vegetables from your garden. I could really see this being a, a fall or winter meal. Anyway, so all we're going to do is just layer layer this stuff in. And I also have some spices to put in. Pretty much every early recipe seems to have nutmeg in it, so I have some nutmeg. And I also have salt, pepper, some Italian seasoning, and uh, coriander. I just went through the, sp the spice and herb drawer and sniffed everything and just sort of chose what I felt might be appropriate. This is a fairly mild flavored dish, so I didn't go with anything too strong flavored. So, of course, uh, another thing I uh, forgot to mention, as you can see, you're going to need a pie crust, a bottom and a top pie crust. Uh, if you have your own recipe, great, you can go ahead and use that. And if you're a novice to pie crusts, I do have another video from this, from my series here about how to make a pie crust. So I'll put the link uh, down below if you're interested in clicking on it and checking it out. And with every layer just sprinkle in all of your herbs and seasonings. Personally I like to go kind of light on the salt because once this is on your plate you can salt it to your preference. Some people like more, some people like less. So I just put on a, just a little bit. Also make sure to preheat your oven. I'm preheating to 375 degrees. Okay, so it's all layered up and ready to go. Uh, one thing you'll see, I of course I pre-made the crusts and to keep the top crust together, I just left the saran wrap on it uh, when I rolled it out. So I just want to make sure this is packed down as much as it'll go. 
just so it doesn't sink too much, and that's that's about it. That's about as much as I'm gonna get. So I'll take the crust, lay it over top, peel off the saran wrap. Pinch off the extra crust, but keep it keep it available just in case you need it. And then pinch the top and bottom crust together. Now after I've pinched the crust together, I, I, I really do like crust, so I will reintroduce these pieces that I pinched off. I pinched them off just because it's a little easier to, to blend the top and bottom crust together without these getting in the way. But I do like when you get to the end of a slice of pie, you have that nice chunk of crust you can you can chop into. And I'll restate something that I mentioned in my pie crust video, I'll say it again. Uh, try as best you can to keep pie crust cold. It helps with its consistency and its uh, the overall product, the end result. So keep it in the fridge if you pre-make it. Keep it in the fridge while you're preparing everything else and touch it as little as possible so your hands don't warm it up. And my crust is all together, I'm going to make it pretty by making it make a little pleated crust. Just push one finger in between any two others. And lastly, take a knife, cut a couple steam vent slots up top, And some people people might choose to coat this with uh, half and half or cream or uh, an egg yolk mixture just to make it golden or pretty or something. But I, I don't bother with that, and it comes out just fine. And one, one other thing, when you put your the edge of your crust together, make sure you kind of pull it in so it is not hanging off the edge of the pie plate. Make sure the pie plate is supporting it. Because otherwise, when you bake it, that crust will uh, kind of melt and fall off. What I actually do is I keep a uh, junk cookie tray underneath the pie, you know, the next rack down underneath the pie when I bake it, just in case some uh, pie juice leaks out or a piece of crust falls off and it doesn't uh, ruin the bottom of my oven. So I'm going to put this in. Again, 375 degrees. I'm not sure how long. It'll probably take a while to cook, really cook and simmer the, uh, the onions and the potatoes and get those done. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe 350 degrees will be better. You don't want to overcook the crust before the insides get done. So I'll throw this in, I'm thinking at least 40, 45 minutes or so, and then we'll take a look at it. All right, it's all done. It's been in the oven for probably about an hour and 20 minutes. And I can tell it's done by just sticking a knife through one of my little vent slots that I cut and I can feel the uh, the insides but they don't offer a lot of resistance to the knife so I figure that they're cooked just right. So let's take this out and the hardest part is waiting for it to cool off. Alright the time has come. You get away from there. Not yet. Look how beautiful and flaky that crust is. That's yep. That's going to be a good crust. Hopefully everything inside is nicely cooked. There's nothing like a nice caramelized onion. Oh, it smells pretty good though. Oh, that smells good. All right. a look at it. Piping hot. Oh, I missed the, uh-oh, missed the bottom crust. Time for a taste test. How is it? Mm. Does it meet, meet your approval? It'll suffice. Good. I can definitely smell those 
herbs and spices I put in, even though I didn't put in too many or too much. Once it cooks, it really uh, increases in in uh, smell or flavor, whatever you want to call it. Yep, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's definitely um, you know mild, mm -hmm. but. This, I don't know if I told you, this is from the 18th century cooking. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of those recipes are very uh, mildly seasoned and I, I imagine pretty mildly flavored. I haven't made too many of those recipes, but I think this is one of the more flavorful ones. Also, I put in a little extra uh, seasoning. But, but the, the first piece tastes a little bland, but the more you eat it, the more you, you start kind of training your tongue to pick up on the finer uh, flavors of it. And it's a good, simple, quick meal. Easy to put together. Just requires a cutting board and something to mix up the, the pie dough in. Alright, so that's it. It passes the taste test. And... Uh, Hope you guys enjoy this if you if you give it a try. And also make sure to, to click down below and, and check out 18th century cooking. I imagine if you enjoy these videos, you will enjoy his as well. So until next time, thanks for watching and uh, come back for more.